Pass up the Jeep, it's good to be free. Load up the pans and fishing poles. The highway is long, the wheels turning round. Pack up the cook stove and the bowls. Arlo and I, we hit the open road. Arlo and I are on the road. Hey everybody, so Arlo and I are out and about again today and uh, we thought we would go on a nice little hike and we've had a little bit of rain lately so we we're hoping we might see some nice um, wildflowers. Um, so it's a nice beautiful day today, it's in the 50s and the clouds are just perfect So and the lighting is perfect so um, hopefully we'll uh, come across uh, some nice wildflowers. Although. Even if we don't, everything else is so green and beautiful that I think it's just going to be a beautiful day. As you can see today, we're on a designated trail. Um, so um, we do have to keep um, Arlo on a leash today. Um, there are going to be a lot of other hikers, maybe some other dogs, and uh, possibly some uh, people on horseback, um, and some bike riders. So, um, this is a popular trail, um, so we'll probably uh, run into uh, somebody while we're uh, hiking around. Um, so. Uh, now, there are some flowers out um, that are starting to bloom um, but hopefully we can find some uh, some nice color up here now this plant is kind of a nasty plant this is actually called globe chamomile or uh, stink net and this is an invasive species and it poses a severe fire danger here when it dries out. In most cases, um, we try to clear that out, um, you know, around our houses and stuff uh, for fire danger out here in Arizona. Um, but unfortunately, it's everywhere and you can't escape it. that you know and it is kind of pretty but um, in its own way um, but we know how uh, terrible it is so um, I'm not excited to see that flower um, though it does smell nice it smells like uh, well you know a daisy um, so it's like a, a daisy without petals see here Nice saguaro. There are a lot of saguaros in this area. Um, and this right here um, is called the jumping choya or teddy bear choya. And the reason they call it that is because these um, pieces of these arms they just drop right off. Um, if you touch them, they'll just stick all over you. It's actually a very beautiful cactus, but probably the most nasty thing out here. Um, other than its beauty, um, I don't really have anything good to say about it. Um, you know, once you get that stuck in you, um, you never forget. And it's always a danger, especially when you have the dog. Um, they just brush up against it and uh, it sticks in their fur and then they go to grab it with their uh, mouth and then they get it all stuck in their mouth too so it's just a nasty thing and uh, this is a Palo Verde tree um, you can see it's uh, really stands out with those uh, bright green uh, trunk and stems which is uh, definitely a lot of uh, 
the uh, desert plants have a uh, photosynthesizing, um, you know, branches and trunks. So um, even if all these leaves drop off, um, they can still stay alive. Looks like there's some uh, uh, storm clouds in the distance there. I think it's supposed to, um, there's a chance of uh, more rain tonight. Now this here is uh, a beautiful tree. Um, it doesn't look that beautiful right now, um, but it is a uh, ironwood tree. And uh, soon that tree is going to have beautiful pink and white flowers all over it. Um, I think it's related, uh, it's in the pea family, I believe. There. Another of those pretty ironwood trees. The sun shining through those saguaros is beautiful. Now this, this right here, just starting to bloom, is called the creosote bush or greasewood. See that? And it's starting to flower right here. Um, and that has a very distinctive smell to it. Um, it's actually the smell. When you think of rain here in Arizona, that's the smell. This is another really cool desert plant out here. This is called the jojoba, and it has these very oil-rich nuts, seeds on here. Um, you can see that. Um, and you can see um, the jojoba. Now this is a female uh, plant here. Uh, it has the uh, nuts on it, um, but this is a plant that's very useful um, for these oily seeds, um, which are often used for um, uh, cosmetics or uh, skin creams. Um, I know that some animals eat these, and I think there is a way that uh, you can eat these, um, but I don't think it's a, a really great edible um, nut. Um, now this over here, you can see this right here, you can see is the male. Jojoba. Another uh, of the creosote bush. Mm, I just love that smell. Very uh, desirable smell, especially if you live out here. These pretty little yellow flowers here. Uh, this is called brittle bush. And uh, I think it's a very resinous plant, and I think that uh, it's often been used uh, for that. They make a glue or something from the resinous plant. Um, it's right next to this uh, staghorn choya here. But as I look off, into the distance here. I mean, you can see the jojoba um, all over uh, the hills here. Um, there's one uh, small um, ocotillo over there. Looks sort of like an upside down octopus. Um, but uh, you can see the creosote bush and uh, there's another iron one, iron 
wood tree right there, as well as lots of the uh, um, Palo Verdes. And if you look way down there, um, you can see a whole little forest of those teddy bear um, choyas down there. Um, of course, and saguaros all over. Um, very beautiful. And the lighting this time of day is just gorgeous. Here, we're starting to see some of these beautiful purple or blue uh, lupin um, flowers here, which uh, just stand up in these beautiful stalks like this. And they have the cool star-shaped leaves. Um, hopefully we'll find some more cool flowers as we go. more of that yellow brittle bush, which grows everywhere out here. And you can see those purple flowers. That's a lupin um, growing all over the hill here. Here is a cool small example of an ocotillo. Um, normally they're super tall and they have these beautiful sort of rosy red flowers on top. Um, we'll see if we can find an example um, with starting to get some flowers on it. But what's cool about that is you can take those flowers and uh, put them in some cool water and make a nice um, delicious drink from them. So let's see if we can find some of those. I can see some ocotillos up on the hill here. Um, that do have some flowers are just starting to bloom. Um, I don't know if you can see those blooms on the end of those uh, ocotillo branches um, with the moon in the sky in the background. Um, they're just starting to bud, so they haven't opened up yet. Wow, <laughs> what a beautiful view. Out there, you can see city of Scottsdale and you know Phoenix uh, beyond that way down there This time of day is so beautiful with the uh, way the light just plays across the hills there and with a little bit of rain that we've had lately um, it's nice and green so you have all those different shades of green pastel greens and, and sort of uh, um, sage greens So bush smells so good. Now a lot of people um, have used that plant um, for sort of a antibacterial um, type of plant where they would make soak it in water and you could soak it and put it on your skin um, as an antibacterial. But it's also, also used as a cleansing smoke um, to kill bacteria. 
um, on your body. In the female jojoba with the hoba nuts. I love to see how plants are hanging on in the rocks. Oh. There's a nice uh, ocotillo that we can get a better close of those flowers, or the blossoms actually. See that? Yeah. Very soon those will be opening up and we'll uh, be able to pick a few of those and we'll make a nice sweet drink. Now we do need to be careful of rattlesnakes, just be wary. Um, we have had some warm days lately and they are starting to come out and uh, we'll start seeing a lot of them. Um, but right now, the air is still cool, but um, they're out, they're definitely out. I haven't seen any yet this year, um, but they'll be out soon. Look at the sun shining through those choyas. One of the most beautiful sights in the desert. Oh man, uh, even though those toyas are one of the nastiest plants out here, um, they are beautiful. And I want to make sure that I keep Barlow away from those, um, just because if he gets that in his foot, he's not going to be happy and I'm going to have to get it out. Over here I see several, um, what we call Mexican poppies. Um, they're actually, well, they're closing up for the evening. They kind of, at the end of the day, they close up, but they look like this. Um, there's uh, quite a few of them around here. Um, very pretty wildflower out here, you know, and um, when we have um, the rains in the spring, um, sometimes we have what they call as like a super bloom and all of these hillsides are completely yellow um, filled with these uh, poppies. Another. Another one of those lupines, lupins. See this uh, terrain and the uh, geology is changing a little bit. Um, around here, you can see all these uh, giant quartz boulders around that almost look like snow. That's a cool shot of the saguaros standing tall and then the uh, all the uh, choyas, the sun shining through them. But here you can see the saguaros in the background um, with the uh, staghorn choyas up here, the teddy bear uh, choyas in the back, and then even in the center right there, you see a large prickly pear cactus right there. That's one of the reasons why I love this time of day. I mean, not only is it beautiful, but you can really see the different plants um, just kind of separating from each other um, with the light shining on them because they all reflect the light differently. So uh, they really stand out. Very pretty to see more of the yellows and the blues of the wildflowers. Well, uh, 
well, as beautiful as this day is, um, Arlo and I, I think, are going to start heading back to the car um, and call it uh, a night. Um, it is getting to be around dinner time, so we need to get back home. Um, but so we're going to, uh, I think, um, start heading back. almost pearly kind of uh, surface on there, um, probably due to the sun and just the patina of the weather um, and the sun shining on it, um, which is really beautiful. You know, there's a lot of places in the desert like this that has, you know, this sort of that uh, shiny desert patina where uh, uh, the Native Americans um, thousands of years ago um, would peck um, their petroglyphs into that surface exposing the uh, lighter color underneath and uh, and it makes for a really uh, striking background for it it really stands out there's some more of that some more of that uh, brittle bush, uh, which is everywhere, um, but you know, very beautiful. You know, with its uh, beautiful patches of yellow just all over the place. Um, even though it's everywhere, um, just one of those uh, desert plants that you know you can always expect to see, and it's always pretty, um, especially with those sort of um, sagey like blue leaves and then the yellow contrasting flowers uh, it's just it's just a beautiful kind of uh ubiquitous plant in the desert um, but uh i find it really beautiful you know it's it's, it's like one of those plants that you pass by every day i'm just like a lot of these like this uh creosote bush and um, these Palo Verdes, um, even the saguaros, um, we see them every day. Um, and so often we don't slow down to look at them, but they're so beautiful. And, uh, you know, they just scream out Sonoran Desert. Those furry leaves. Um, typically, all of the uh, plants in the desert here um, have some sort of protection against the elements, against the sun, against the heat, and often they have um, very furry or hairy leaves um, to protect them, or often um, sort of a, a waxy coating, and uh, almost always has some sort of spines uh, to protect them from. Um, the animals. It's in a desert, you know, people think of the desert, um, you know, stereotypical desert um, of you know, sand dunes and all that, but um, the uh, Sonoran Desert is completely different. Although it's very arid and very dry, um, we do have an abundance of uh, different plants and animals and um, it's very rich um, with life. And um, what's cool about 
um, this area of the world is that even in the middle of the winter, um, you can find uh, things to eat, um, cactuses and uh, fruits and things. Um, now we're coming on, this is, uh, oh, this is uh, the end, oh no, we're in uh, just after the middle of March. Um, it's actually uh, around uh, St. Patrick's Day. And uh, things are starting to warm up a little bit. Um, we're getting a lot of uh, blooms and uh, some of the early fruiting uh, plants are starting to pop, starting to explode. Um, so uh, we'll have uh, plenty of opportunity to uh, come out and forage for uh, lots of cool stuff coming up here pretty soon. Um, downside to that is heat is coming and uh, uh, you know, it kind of sucks to uh, be out here in the middle of the desert in the middle of the summer. So um, I'll be moving um, back up north, up into the pine trees, and uh, just like I did last summer, and we'll be uh, concentrating a lot on uh, those upper elevations and uh, all the things to uh, find and do up there where the uh, temperature is a lot cooler in the middle of the summer. Um, so I look forward to that, but we still have you know, maybe another couple of months, a uh, month, month and a half to two months of uh, nice uh, weather down here um, in the desert. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully uh, be able to take advantage of that, especially if we have weather like this, which we've had lately, which we've had uh, um, quite a bit of rain lately. So we get that overcast skies and um, nice cloud cover, um, which uh, makes for really nice hiking um, and a lot cooler, uh, a lot cooler weather. Um, plus, the rain actually, you know, makes everything green, which is a plus too. Um, it's actually a double-edged sword. Um, you know, when we have our spring rains, um, we do get a lot of greenery, um, which dies off quickly um, in the summer when it gets super hot, and. Uh, that becomes uh, very combustible and becomes fuel for uh, forest fires. Um, so um, that is the downside to having nice rains in the spring, um, is all that vegetation uh, dries up um, and we do have the chance of fires, um, either man-made or um, natural. Um, but, uh, you know, good with the bad, yin with the yang. Um, but. Uh, but it is super nice uh, to have this weather right now um, so we can enjoy the outdoors when it's a little bit cooler. Um, yeah, like I said today, I think it was at its highest point, I think it was uh, some, somewhere in the 60s, uh, maybe mid, mid to upper 60s. Um, and then uh, the uh, storm was coming through and it was uh, definitely in the 50s, which was super nice. Um, Right now it's probably in the 50s, probably mid 50s, mid upper, eh, mid 50s probably right now. Um, so, well, I can see the parking lot down in the distance there, and I just wanted to thank everybody for um, following along with this little um, short little hike today. Um, we just wanted to get out into the desert. Um, before dinner time, and now we're gonna head home, get something to eat, and uh, um, just a nice little uh, nature walk. Um, when you see this video, um, I think I'm gonna post this video on Easter morning. Um, so uh, happy Easter, everybody. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed our little hike, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, bye. It's fun to be free. Load up the pans and fish and bones. Arlo and I, we hit the open road. Arlo and I on the road. Yep. All right. Ah, let's head home.